maker. But the things that they do well, the, the things that they do very well, enable other players to be so much more effective than they would be without them. That started with Bill Russell. Because he was such a great defender and a great rebounder, he enabled other people who had talents elsewhere. You know, whether it was, like I said, Casey Jones, Sam Jones, Jojo White, uh, Tommy Heisen, whatever talents or skills they did have were enabled by how great Bill was at the things that he did well. You could say the same thing about Magic Johnson, for example. Magic Johnson was such an extraordinary playmaker and such an extraordinary, uh, and was so inspirational, just kind of in the way he played the kind of, it wasn't just that Magic, some of us who are a little bit older know, it wasn't just that Magic was a great playmaker or great at doing assists. Magic played with a, a kind of joy or effervescence that was infectious. Like, like I say, the only player that I ever would have, that I would ever think about, and I'm a Chicagoan, so you're going to go here with me, Roger. The only player that I would ever think about drafting over Michael Jordan would be Magic, Irvin Magic Johnson. Because I know if I if I get magic, every motherfucker on that team are gonna play. They're gonna ball. The, the the guy who just came out of college, the white guy, whatever, the the Kurt Rambuses, the AC Greens, they gonna ball with magic. Mm. Bill yeah. Russell was a predecessor of that. Like people talk about how many Hall of Famers that Bill Russell played with. My response to that is, how many of those guys would have been Hall of Famers had they not played with Bill? I don't. I think most of those guys would not have been Hall of Famers had they not played with William Russell. Okay. And you know what? I'm going to respectfully say that uh, out of respect for Black O'Rou, who's getting up there in years, and sometimes we get up there in years, we get a little confused sometimes, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I, but really, out of respect to Bill Russell, I, I, I saw I saw Michael Jordan play every every season. I'm <laughs> older than Michael Jordan, well, so you know. No. I mean, I, I saw Michael Jordan play as a grown man, and I'm not saying this to say any, to speak <laughs> negatively about MJ, not at all. But I saw his whole career, and I, I, I I'm saying going. that if I can get Magic Johnson. If I can get an Urban Magic Johnson, I would seriously consider that. And all I would saying, seriously, I would seriously consider that. All I'm saying is, before I get a mic to Kevin, <laughs> out of respect to Bill Russell, I know I'm you gonna, gonna let that push Magic that. Johnson comment go. I'm, I'm letting it go out of respect to Bill Russell. <laughs> so, so because this about him today. This about him mm -hmm. today. So, I hey, hey, but 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 let me understand. Let me let me. Because I kind of went afield from the point. The point I was trying to make, you know, I'll go back to my initial point. And that is that, and this is a, to, in my view, Bill Russell is a life lesson for, for men, black men in particular, overall. And that is sometimes, if you can, sometimes if you can identify the thing that you do extremely well, Sometimes you can multiply the effect of that if you place that thing in the right environment and you have the right support. And, 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 and it may not matter as much what your weaknesses are if your strengths are accurately and adequately applied and supported. And I think that's what Bill Russell represents that even though you could, people will nitpick his his stats but what though what they don't account for is how how magnified the effects were of the things that he did extremely well and you can apply that philosophy in any business you can apply that i i would argue you know and you can correct me kevin in the military in school 
Some, sometimes, yeah. again, the things that you do very well over and above surmount, can surmount the things that you may not do as well. And I think that's what Bill Russell represents. So. Which I can definitely agree with that. I can definitely agree with that. And I want to say shout out to the great pretender. Thank you very much for the super chat. He says more topics like these, please. Of course, it'll be more topics like these. Of course, it'll be more because y'all anything that's important to black people, y'all going to be able to find it here. Anything that I deem is worthy, uh, you'll be able to find it here because this is a black centric channel and black people will be about over here. Other people are fine to watch, but that's what it's about over here. So anything that I believe is important and worthy of discussion, y'all going to find it over here. But Kevin, go ahead, my brother. How you doing? Hey, first of all, uh, hello to everybody. Uh, Roger is the host, Uru. Hey, Kevin. Uh, basically, it's a conversation between you two gentlemen because uh, you are you're literally on fire because you you lived a lot of this and you've seen a lot of it or you saw a lot of it, uh, you know, uh, coming of age. And and like you said, you can you can template uh, Bill Russell against everybody because you came of age at a time when he was you know doing his doing his work. Um, you know, I, I came of age about a, a about a decade and a half later. So I remember, of course, Irvin Johnson, Michael Jordan, you know, and all and everybody else after that. Um, so but but uh, I, I, sometimes I think I'm an anachronism and that I was born about 20 years too late because I, one thing as a, as a history nerd. Right. I'm a I'm a mid-level I'm a self-proclaimed mid-level academic and a history nerd. Right. So I kind of uh, look I kind of look towards the 60s and the Vietnam era and 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 it's kind of like a, a period that I probably should have been in, but I was just 20 years too late to, to kind of to, to, to be uh, any, uh, uh, you know, uh, to experience it and actually, uh, you know, get that firsthand, uh, uh, you know, observation of it. But uh, you've done a really good job, Uru, of actually talking about uh, the circumstances, uh, what, what, what uh, Bill Russell was working under. And I understand when people come up, and they start talking like, oh, it wasn't a big deal. I understand why you almost go in on them like right away, because I try to I, I think about that, too. Like, you know, we almost forget, you know, how much uh, greater that black people, if they got anything done during those time frames, you know, the 50s, the 60s, the 50s and even earlier, how much greater they had to be, and how much influence they had to have and, 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 and what they had to just overcome to just to move around in a society as a as a free man or a semi free man, if you want to call it that. And you and you you point you point out very eloquently uh, all the stuff that he had to deal with, even in his home city where he was winning and doing so much things, doing so many things that were great. Whereas today, if you're winning as much as he is, you know, you get two or three championships. You know, you're, you're celebrated, you know, tremendously. Um, uh, uh, well, so. well, like you mentioned, LeBron. They mentioned LeBron James. He's won four championships, and he's a billionaire. Mm. Well, how how rich should Bill Russell be by comparison? Yeah, you know, three, three literally uh, three times four or four or five times that <laughs> easily. Know. So I, I mm. mean, you know, that's why when we when we have these debates, these you know generational debates or these mm -hmm. these intergenerational debates. You know, I think before Bill, and I'm not, I'm not sure what happened, uh, but I know at some point uh, there supposedly was an auction of Bill Russell's uh, 11 championship rings. Yeah, I believe that's uh, true. Now, I don't know if that, that auction went through uh, and who, and if it did go through, who bought those rings, because I think at some point Shaq had, had, declared that he was going to buy the rings or whatever in sort of an honor to Bill Russell. So I don't know what happened to those rings. Uh, but a billionaire doesn't sell his 11 championship rings. Now, why am no, I making no, this yeah, point? That, yeah. as, as much as Bill achieved, and, and my guess is Bill sold those rings. My guess is, because this is fairly recent, my guess is he didn't sell those rings for himself. My my guess is he sold those rings for his uh, heirs, his children, grandchildren, et cetera, whatever. Which mm -hmm. which suggests to me that I'm, I'm sure Bill lived a comfortable life. You know, I'm, I'm sure in his latter years he he didn't 
want for much. But, I mean, there's no indication at all that he died of a billionaire, right? And, no, and, but yeah, you can assume he, he lived pretty comfortable here, with it, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure, you know, he lived a comfortable life. I, I mean, I'm yeah. not saying that he was destitute, but what I'm saying is, you know, he didn't he didn't harvest the all the fruit of the uh of the field that he planted. Not in the least bit. Barely in any sort of fractional proportion did he harvest that fruit. There are a whole lot of and, and let's emphasize this point. There's a league of teams that are worth billions of dollars. Yeah, yeah. Billions of dollars. Did Bill enjoy that? The uh, only owner, the only black owner of a professional, majority black owner of a professional basketball team is Michael Jeffrey Jordan. So you have to be the greatest basketball player, maybe the greatest athlete of the 20th century, just to be able to own a mediocre basketball team, franchise in Charlotte, uh, North Carolina. Yeah, that's some perspective, yeah. that That's the caste system that Bill lived, and even to some degree, MJ lived in. That's the caste system. Michael Jordan has generated hundreds of billions of dollars. He's worth what? Maybe a couple billion? Great. Uh, he's, worth, he's worth two. Two Jordan billion is worth dollars. Two. And Russell is I worth... I would argue if, if, my, if Michael Jordan was a white man, he'd be worth 20 times that amount. I have yeah, no Bill doubt Russell, in my mind. Bill Russell net worth is about $10 million. $10 yeah. million. $10 million. $10 million. Ten fucking million dollars. Yeah. The guy who basically fucking built the league. Ten fucking million dollars. But, but it's, different it's different time and unfortunately. But it ain't just about the time, brother, with all due respect. It ain't just no, about no, the time. But, but, See, but, but, let me let me let me explain something to you about how America works. I know with all America. due respect. No, let me explain something to you. When you are a white man. And you have a certain status or a certain achievement. Other white men make a point of you fucking becoming a billionaire. You Absolutely. don't have to do if you don't white if you're a certain white man, you ain't gotta do shit. You ain't gotta but, do nothing. They gonna cover your ass, they gonna throw everything at you, they gonna protect you just because the fuck of who you are. LeBron, but I'll I'll put it to you this way. LeBron James doesn't make a billion dollars if he plays in the nineties. Kobe no. doesn't make. No. I mean, it's just it's just access mm -hmm. different times. Different well, first of all, the, with the, some of the stuff that LeBron did, he wouldn't have been able to get away with doing that. Moving right. around so, teams, moving around players, he wouldn't have right. been able to even get away with doing that. So he benefits off the other guys. I mean, it's yeah. tough being the first motherfucker. And being the first and then trying to be successful at the same time. Normally, the first motherfucker is the sacrificial lamb. Mm -hmm. what, well, you know, with that being said, let, let me just reiterate that we have to understand when Bill Russell was playing, on any given night, the proper thing for a lot of people in this society would be to kill him. It would be the proper move. That was the climate he played in, where the right thing to do was kill his nigga for winning. Right, so he he was highly successful at the time. No, no, no. He 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 was. No, I'm just we're, saying we're it, not it, questioning the success. I mean, of Bill but he, I mean, he's rich. He was rich for the time, right? No, but but rich. but the point. Uh, okay, I, and and maybe you don't understand. Like he was, he was, he he died of a quote wealthy man end quote. I'm just saying though that, you know, if he were. If he achieved everything he achieved and he were a white man, he would have died a billionaire. And there would be know. no there would yeah, be no issue about him selling rings and stuff like that, because all the forces of white supremacy would have surrounded him in such a way that it would have been beneath their dignity for someone of his particular accomplishments to not 
ascend economically. But look at Jerry, Jerry West, yeah. right? I mean, his net worth is what? His net worth is like maybe his net worth is 50 million, and that's Jerry yes. West, right? Yes. So it ain't. It ain't that Jay West right now. Uh, net worth is fifty million dollars. Well, well, you know what though? Uh, some I just heard heard this. Somebody said yesterday. I, I can't remember who said it. Well, I saw the clip yesterday. I don't know what when exactly they said. But it was just in the last few days since Bill Russell's death, and they was like, "Who really should be the logo?" It really should have been Bill Russell, not Jay yeah, Bill Russell. Russell. Yeah, Matter of fact, Russell. I think it was Jaden Rose. I think I think that was Jaden Rose who said that, which well, was a very good observation. Yeah. They, mm-hmm. You know, Jerry Russell won one championship. He lost like nine times in the finals. Yep, and he that's lost what eight times to Bill. And and that's why I don't understand the love for LeBron because they're more or less the same. <laughs> you gonna squeeze Side yours though. in there? I see you yeah. gonna squeeze yours in. There. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm just saying. I mean, we can move on. Well, I mean, I, I, I want to. The focus really is is the, just the magnitude of what he was able to accomplish. Based on the time frame that he was living in, so that's yeah. that. That's probably that's very significant to me. When because I don't I don't know all the you know, and I did look at the stats, Uru, and uh, you're right. He's he's actually under 500 in a lot of categories. Not very high in points per game, all of that stuff. Not really super impressive, but it's just the way that he was able to do what he did on the court and actually we spread himself about, around. But, but, but he could have played a different game. He could have played mm-hmm. a different way, and he could have ginned up a lot of stats, uh, and and maybe the Celtics would not have been as successful yeah. as they were had he done those things. See, Bill was an incredible athlete, um, but I, I read somewhere where he said that, you know, when he was young, he had, I don't know if it was in high school or college or whatever, but he had had all these great indiv- individual statistics. And there was apparently some sort of award or whatever for the best player or whatever. I don't know if it was high school or college or whatever. And if you look at his statistics, he clearly should have have gotten that that trophy. I don't know if it was MVP or something. He talked about that. He talked about that in an interview. Um, It's this white guy. He interviews all the uh, all the Celtics uh, legends. So Bill Simmons, um, Bill Simmons. Yeah, Bill, thank you, thank you, thank you. And he 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 sat there and he talked and he talked about how he said that when you face some guys, that some guys all they look is their production. And he was talking about Wilt Chamberlain a lot. So what he would do is he would do a rope a dope. He would stop the other guys, but let Wilt get 30, 40, 50, mm-hmm. 50 points, whatever, right? And he'll keep, and he also keep himself under Wilt's number. So if Wilt got twenty, he'll get fifteen, whatever, right? Because he knows that he doesn't want Wilt to go off. And as long as Wilt seeing that he's getting his numbers and his numbers, individual numbers are better than everybody else on the floor, he kind of just like kind of just there, right? And and that was one of the things he talked about. And Kobe also iter- iterated that. He talked about that with T Mac. He talked about how. But, some but I, I wanted to make the point. Uh, I, I appreciate that point, but I wanted to make the. I mean, point but that's why was, his stats are low. That's what I'm saying. That's why his stats. No, were but low. but what? And I think this kind of backs up what you're saying because this kind of predates the Will thing. Uh, because yeah. from what I read was he said that. What he learned from that experience, like I said, I think it was in high school or college or whatever. Uh, and he assumed that because of his stats, he was going to get this award, right? And he, they gave it to the white guy, obviously. You know, this is the 50s, right. Right? right? And he said what he learned from that was to, um, what he learned from that was that that was a subjective measure of success. You know, yeah. an MVP. Uh, you know, anything where where people can can make a make some sort of qualitative uh, assertion about how well you did. Uh, you know, is subject to bias, right. and that that was the inspiration towards him focusing primarily on winning, because right. winning is objective. The score right. is the score, and right. and. and like I said, I mean, apparently he learned this lesson early 
in his yeah. life, even like that predated his uh, professional career. And so what yeah. you see uh, largely from the way he played is a function mm-hmm. of, yeah, I could average 30 points a game, but we'll we yeah, win. Yeah, no doubt. You know? No doubt. Uh, so there you and, go. And, and, you know and, 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 and so I think what you see of his stats is a product of him enabling other people to be effective, uh, right. which, which, which then would make which wouldn't necessarily be reflective of how his own individual whatever. offensive stats would appear to be. Right, right, and I, and I agree with that because he's all about whatever whatever wins the game, right? I, I yeah. don't give a fuck, just whatever wins the game. And, like, yeah. you, you juxtapose that with LeBron, his his stats look fantastic, but his bitch ass mm-hmm. is still under 500 in the finals. So yeah. I agree. Well, I, and, and I was saying before, well, you know, sometimes the sum is greater than the visual. Yeah. yeah, I think LeBron is in a way kind of an opposite of Bill Russell in that even though he, he does a lot of things well individually, I think when you add them up, the effect of those are actually less than yes. their whole. Right. And, and so right. that's and that's why I think. He is not or has not been as effective in terms of winning championships as, let's say, a Bill Russell or a Magic Johnson or whatever, because even though he may grab a lot of rebounds and have a lot of assists and uh, and score a lot of points, he what he does, in my view, what LeBron fails to do is enable other players to be the best that they can be. Okay, and I kind of saw that last season a bit, right? Okay, well, I, I want to yeah. say real quick that uh, when um, Bill Russell auctioned off some of his memorabilia because we was talking about that him doing his t- uh, auction off his rings. It's part of some of the memorabilia he's auctioned off. Um, Bill Russell as a man, because yeah, he was he was a fantastic basketball player, but as a man, he was just as great as a man as he. Matter of fact. Many would argue he was a greater man than ba- than great basketball player. If you if you say manhood, how to achieve greatness, and then you say basketball, how to achieve greatness, many would argue that he far su- succeeded. Well, he's it, yeah, he far surpasses the comparison of him as a basketball player to just him as a man. And he he uh he auctioned things out to help with an organization that he co-founded called Mentor. Of course, this is to help use so even so bill russell you know black rule you were saying he always made the right play well bill russell always made the right play in life yeah yeah. but but the only thing i would say about that is and it's not a criticism not in the least bit but again i think if bill is a white man he can make that donation without selling off his rings because here's the other part of selling off those rings is well, what about his children and his grandchildren? Yeah, yeah, because that's a part of that's their legacy. Yeah. Absolutely, and, yeah. and true. And, and it's not a criticism of his. But I, I again, I'm making a broader statement about what it means to be a great black man who was born in a certain period of time, and, and maybe a, a great white man. For example. Oh, absolutely. Well, that was not lost to me. A great all. white man in the same circumstances does not have to sell off his rings to make that contribution to the charity yeah. of his choice. I mean, unless of course he he's getting cheated by another white man. So I'm just well, saying, that, that happens. <laughs> yeah, why, why that, that happens. That happens. Elvis yeah. Presley, yeah. So yeah, Elvis but, Presley, but I mean, I'm man. just thinking, like, why why not get other? He's well connected. Why not get other people to make that kind of donation instead of selling your rings? Well, I mean, you you have that you have to ask some of his uh, cool. some of the people who came after him. You have to ask that question. You know, me, there's, there's several billionaires and hundred millionaires that have come after Reed, him. Jordan, Shaq, right? He, you know, he so why why does you know why did he feel compelled to do that? Now, maybe he just wanted to do it. Let let's leave open the possibility that he just want maybe. Towards the end, he was like, fuck Boston. <laughs> you know? yeah. and, and maybe was, he's estranged from his kids or whatever. You know, that could all be that could all be true too. Well, well, definitely. And, and, uh, and you know what? It might have been he wanted more control over that because say it gets inherited, he passes it down, and then somebody else sells it off or something like that. Yeah, I mean, maybe his children unfortunately did not 
uh, appear to be apt stewards of his legacy. Unfortunately, that kind of stuff happens too. You know. Yeah, I've already told my well, at least some of my kids. I'm like, look, if you get something, you not sell it, don't sell it all because you're not going to get it. You know, it, it's it's literally part of that generational wealth that we keep talking about. And you know, and he obviously he didn't die broke, but at the same time, he might have he might not he might have you know had some other ideas about how it might have played out. So he's like, well, let me go ahead and handle this right now, so I make sure it goes to where I want it to go. So you know, you saw the argument of of of. Uh, of some of the members, but, but I, I don't did, did it say who who bought the rings? Because I know I heard Shaq say he was gonna buy the rings, but that was a couple of years. No, I'm ago, pretty sure so. some white dude, some 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 Wall Street banker, probably some billionaire it. hedge fund yes. motherfucker, yeah. yeah, who could overpay for it, yeah, that kind of thing, yeah, 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 stuff like that. That's yeah. America though. That's America though, where you can be some lucky sperm club member and you can buy eleven championship rings from a black man. That's America. Well, that that, that is a, a, a great point. And, uh, you know, that's why I think we, we as Americans really don't even understand the greatness of Bill Russell. And, and, and it is kind of a shame that at this particular point, the movie ain't already out. Now, I, I'm not going to be mad that the movie should be better now because of technology and what they can do and, and everything. But the man lived the life that's been worth the movie. You know, you when you go into racist town after racist town to, to go win championships, and then when other black men need your support and you're and you're fine with putting it out in public that I support this other black man who's being persecuted due to racism. Man, it, it takes a great man to, to do that, knowing that you continually put yourself and your family at risk of dying because of the climate that you live in. Uh, gentlemen, gentlemen, for the record, he only sold two. From my research, he only sold. He two only sold two. Oh, that's, yeah, that's good then. Yeah, he only that might two. be so far. Yeah, because like I heard, they were all <laughs> up for for auction. Yeah, he sold his 1996 NBA championship ring for 558,000 and the 1957 ring for 705,000. What what he, he sold the what what years were those again? Uh the nine the 69 ring and the 57 ring. So the first one and the last one. Damn. Damn. Somebody got the first one and the last one. Yeah, it doesn't say that's what you that, right? But he only sold well, I mean, but he sold other stuff. Like he sold his 96 jersey for 1.1 million. Uh he sold his Olympic gold medal, 1956 Olympic gold medal for 587,000. And that's it. Hey, is you trying to get in there? Okay, so he has most he has some background noise. Oh, he he also sold his 10,000 point basketball for 45,000. Yeah, I, you know, like I say, hopefully the money goes to good use. And um, but, uh, this was 2021, 2021. Yeah. This was 2021. yeah, I knew I knew it was recent because uh, I remember them talking about it on the, you know, the was yeah, it the but, TNT show or whatever. Yeah, yeah um, but he so I mean. And, and, and like I said, yeah, I mean, I hope that's not, you know, I hope whatever family, you know, I hope they're all, they were all yeah. on board that I, I, I would mean, hate to jersey, think that. A jersey know. is cool, though. Selling your jersey. I mean, you got, you no, jersey's hard. fine, but th those rings, given yeah. what those rings and the Olympic represent. Gold medal. Yeah, yeah, dude, I don't yeah. know if I would sell Olympic gold medal. I'm, I'm with Donnie Mac. Donnie, Mr. Donnie Mac says, I'm not selling any of my college championship memorabilia. <laughs> well, I'm going to say this, y'all. If I had rings, especially some NBA rings, you ain't getting those out of me. Point blank, period. You, you, you're not going to get them out of me. So, you know, he probably was just a better man than I am when it comes to that. You know what I'm saying? You're not getting my rings. My well, ring it depends on what they do with that stuff but, sometimes. But, but too. If, if you're. If if sometimes you're, people if, will buy it, you know, right? And then they'll loan it for display, well, well, right? I'm, I'm saying I, I believe his but, greatness. But, I, but is, understand where Bill Russell was. I mean, he, he knew he didn't have long, right? So, true. I mean, saying that from the perspective of, of somebody who feels like well, he's going to be he around a while, that's different than, than, than really kind of seeing the end being near 
and well, you I mean, start reflecting. Huh? 